Hello, my name is Francis O'Reilly. Welcome to this edition of the Telescope Makers Workshop. Today is September 7th, 2015, and I'm at Stellafane. Today we're going to be discussing integrated telescopes. That is, telescopes that are integrated into buildings, that are a part of the building. Not an observatory necessarily, but just a building that's built with telescopes in it. The example we will discuss today is the 12 inch polar Cassegrain designed by Russell Porter and built into the Stellafane Clubhouse that I'm standing in front of right now. This telescope is designed so that one can observe the southern skies from inside the clubhouse where it was warm even though it may be very cold outside. We're in Vermont, New York, uh, Vermont, U.S. Vermont gets very, very cold in the winters, and yet people still like to observe. Indeed, there are a number of very interesting objects to observe during the winter months. So as a result, the Springfield telescope makers designed a telescope that they could use from inside. This building actually has three separate telescopes integrated into it. It has the polar Cassegrain, which is a 12-inch telescope of unknown aperture ratio. That's something we'll have to research. It has a transit scope on the side of the building that is able to be used. And it has a, a solar telescope through the attic in the back. Additionally, behind me and out of range of the camera, there's the Porter Turret Telescope, and down in Springfield, there's a telescope at a uh, hotel known as the Hartness House that is a refractor in a turret type and features an 8-inch flint-forward Brashear lens. So join me today as we explore the 12-inch polar Cassegrain that's integrated into the Springfield Telescope Makers Clubhouse in Springfield, Vermont. Placed at the back of the Stellafane Pink Clubhouse sits a rather nondescript box. One might think that it was for plumbing or storage purposes. It's not. It covers the mechanical workings of the Polar Cassegrain Telescope. The box is held in place by bolts secured from the inside. I've unscrewed them. We have one bolt. Two bolts. And then the box is removed. It's a two-man job. Once removed, the box reveals the mechanical workings of our polar Cassegrain telescope. We have a mount for the primary mirror, a mount for the secondary mirror, which screws off, We have 
a space for the counterweight. And in a moment, I'll show you how it all fits together. When our box is open, we find the mechanical workings for the polar cassegrain. I've just added the counterweight. The primary mirror goes up on top and is affixed by screwing, by placing the mirror over here, screwing this support end with a washer in front of it. That holds the mirror. There's a flat that goes right here, and the secondary mirror, as you'll see, comes through here, point directing the light back through the hole and into the building. Fairly complicated system. We have a counterweight also that we keep in our workshop, which has been converted into a supplemental kitchen. So now I'm going to show you our optics. We maintain them inside the clubhouse and they're all in boxes, so you'll see that next. We're now in the clubhouse at Stellafane, and before me, in three boxes, I have the optics that are used in the Polar Cassegrain telescope. In the center, a round box, I have the primary mirror. The primary mirror is a 12-inch mirror. It could use some recoding. It's in fairly uh, oxidized state. And this mirror goes up towards the top. It's held in with a gasket uh, at, around the center. The hole itself is about 2 inches in the Cassegrain. The next optic I have, and I unscrewed the top earlier, is the 16 inch flat that's used to redirect light from the sky to the optics. It also has a center hole and it's somewhat conical on the outside. It fits on top of the uh, mound that you see the wooden uh, dimple. Finally in this small box we have the Cassegrain secondary this is in much better shape, relatively speaking. It was refigured, I believe, by Mario Antonucci, who is in charge of the uh, antique telescopes here at Stellafane. What I'll do now is I'm going to go outside and I'm going to put the telescope together so that you can see how it all fits. The first step I'm going to undertake is to install the primary mirror. A couple of words about the primary mirror. I don't know the aperture ratio of this mirror. I do know, however, after looking at it, that it's from about 1927, which I understand from the history. The mirror is a thin mirror. It's less than an inch thick. And everybody who knows me knows I'm not a fan of thin mirrors. However, in 1927, the glass technology that we have today was not available 85 years ago, 87 years ago, 88 years ago. So they made this mirror. The mirror has chips in it. You've got to be very careful with a mirror when you're out in the sun uh, because I just uh, shined some in my eye. That was not a good thing. So it's not a perfect mirror, but it does the job. Now I'm going to install this first. And the reason it's installed first is there's no optics down below. If this mirror were to drop, it would destroy the mirror. It wouldn't destroy anything below it. To install this mirror, I simply unscrew the retaining cap, take the washer off, hold them in the other hand, slide up the mirror, Get fingerprints all over it. And screw on the retainer.
being careful not to cross thread it. There we go. It has to be screwed on tight because alignment is critical. That's the primary mirror. It is now installed. It needs to be cleaned. I'm not real happy about the status of the coating either. And the way it's set up is probably more of a two-man job to install than a one-man job. Next, I'm going to install the flat, which goes over this hump right here. From there, I'll install the secondary mirror, and we'll be ready to observe. As you can see, this telescope takes a little uh, putting together before it's ready, and that's one of the uh, drawbacks of some of these telescopes, is that you do have to put them together. I did earlier today put on a, the weight to maintain balance, the counterweight. The next step, as I've indicated, is to install the optical flat. And that simply sits right here, right over this hump. And again, this flat is pretty dirty. It's got some chips in it. And rumor has it it's not terribly flat. But since it's so close to the optic, it does the job, and that's all we need. We'll be looking at testing these, uh, these optics at a later date. The final step is going to be install the, to install the Cassegrain secondary, and there's a hole right here on the top which I'll be installing it in. The cast grain secondary simply slides right into this hole right here. It's got three screws to adjust. And now this telescope is ready for observing. Now observing is accomplished from inside the kitchen, which was once a workshop. But let's just take a look at this telescope as it is for a minute. And enjoy it. The brilliance of the design, the intent to allow people to observe even in the winter months when some wonderful objects are out but it's just too cold, the implications for those who would like to observe but simply can't because of the weather are phenomenal, and the opportunity to observe as a group inside the clubhouse which has a kitchen, a fireplace, a nice meeting room make this a very friendly telescope and honestly one of my favorites simply because of the uh, intended purpose and the manner in which it's designed and used. A brilliant design by Russell Porter. Truly a work of art. Here we have a picture of how the Porter 12-inch Polar Cassegrain works. This was done in 1927. It's more of a blueprint. I personally doubt that was done by Russell Porter. 
it's not really his style. It's more of a mechanical layout than it would be something showing the uh, background and how the actual uh, telescope works and fits in. It's just sort of a mecha mechanical uh, blueprint with a rather unfriendly sign below that we don't uh, use. Below, moving down, we have the observing end of the telescope and you can see there's a, a, de a, a hour circle the eyepiece is right in the middle of the circle. Down below is a black knob, and that's used for focusing the telescope. The telescope is focused not by moving the eyepiece in and out, but by moving the secondary, the, cat, the uh, convex uh, secondary, in and out, as is common with many types of Cassegrain telescopes. This knob turns, it's threaded at the bottom, and it adjusts the secondary mirror. The eyepiece is here, it's just one we had lying around, and this actually adjusts between a two inch eyepiece or an adapter for an inch and a quarter eyepiece. We have degrees written on top that show you the orientation of the telescope, and we can also adjust the flat so that we can look at uh, various angles of the sky. This turns. You can hear the flat moving, but since it's a flat, it really shouldn't make any difference if the flat moves a few uh, centimeters. And that is the Porter Polar Telescope. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day and we'll be back again soon. I'm Francis O'Reilly, signing out from the Stellafane Clubhouse in Springfield, Vermont on September 6th, September 7th rather, 2015.